2022 was a rough year for miners, and although we've seen some asset prices rise, the pain may last, at least for some. In a Thursday filing with the Eastern District of New York, Argo Blockchain, which trades on the NASDAQ and the London Stock Exchange, was accused of failing to disclose that it suffered from significant capital constraints, as well as electricity and network difficulties. The suit alleges that, quote, Argo's business was less sustainable than defendants had led investors to believe, and quote, and as a result, the financial prospects for the company were worse than disclosed, thus the lawsuit. The plaintiffs want the case to become a class action lawsuit also, which will mean even more trouble for the beleaguered company. Well, it's been a long time since we've seen a positive story about a miner. What's your read here, and when will we be able to talk about something a little more positive when it comes to miners? It's going to be a while. And my catchphrase for all these stories is distressed miner season because it really is. And Argo blockchain was one of those distressed miners and just kind of hit a wall with a bunch of different things. So as disclosure, I do work for a mining company running media for them. So a little salt there before we start. Argo blockchain took out a lot of debt over 2022 in order to fuel its operations. As you mentioned there, Adam, Difficulty is something that miners have to work against. For those who don't know what difficulty is, it's basically this self-adjusting algorithm within Bitcoin. If more people want to mine Bitcoin, difficulty of mining Bitcoin goes up. If less people want to mine Bitcoin, then it goes down. And difficulty is tied to Bitcoin price. So as Bitcoin's price went up a lot over the last two years, well, a lot of miners wanted to join the network. And so it became very hard to mine Bitcoin. In order to keep up with everyone else, you had to invest in a lot of infrastructure, and a lot of miners and staff, and that stuff is expensive. And so a lot of miners like Argo Blockchain, a few others took out debt, they sold Bitcoin, they diluted their stockholders, and sometimes it just doesn't quite pan out. Things come unlucky. And so I think Argo is in that situation. Uh, though they've had a nice change of pace recently, they've sold some infrastructure and it looks like they're actually holding it pretty steady right now. I do want to turn to the lawsuit side of this really quickly before throwing it up to Zach. And the lawsuit angle here is most miners actually have about a dozen lawsuits out against them. Like this is something I actively track. And why? It's because a lot of these investors got into it for the first time. I think about 20 plus mining companies are now public. Before this cycle, there was maybe a handful, four or five. All these new investors jumping in have no idea what they were purchasing, and they purchase a very volatile asset that trades just like any token out there. It goes up 90%, it goes down 90%, and you have to live with it. And so I think there's a lot of new investors who are just learning the ropes. And right now, they're going to file lawsuits, but next season, they'll probably make some cash. Zach, up to you. Yeah, I was going to say that like about these disclosures, right? Because that's sort of the, uh, you know, the basis for this complaint is that, you know, we were led to believe that they were more sustainable than they really were, right? And I would be curious to know like what sort of legal language goes into some of these disclosures, right? Because you, you, you have to sort of convey the volatility of these markets and the historical reality of 80, 90% drawdowns on some of these major crypto assets, right? And that's something that I don't think the public markets fully realize uh, nor have internalized. If you look at across, like you know, the, the major crypt, the major uh, crypto firms that are publicly listed, they are just getting hammered, right? Coinbase, which has weathered this storm rather admirably, and maybe the last big exchange standing. Public markets don't care about that at all. They see crypto down, and in turn, Coinbase stock is down significantly from those all-time highs back uh, back in I think April 2021 when they first listed. So the reality of the public markets I don't think is really caught up with the reality of the crypto markets, and we keep seeing this sort of discordance between those two things and sort of um, you know misalignment I think from public uh, you know public market investors who just really aren't accustomed to this stuff. So it is pretty crazy. Um, you know, Will, I know you mentioned the uh, the asset sale, their Texas mining facility was was sold to Galaxy Digital in sort of a, a last minute bid to stave off bankruptcy. Um, I think that is sort of interesting as it relates to the Texas mining narrative. Again, in the boom times, that was going to be maybe a, a bigger part of their economy, but they are sort of in hangover mode as miners outright leave and abandon their facilities down in Texas. So pretty crazy to think that you know, the, the, the whiplash of uh, mining firms rushing to go public and now sort of on the, on the brink of bankruptcy in several cases is really quite striking. Jen, I saw your hand up and I'm going to toss it down to you. Curious for your thoughts. 
Yeah, I was going to echo a lot of the same things you and Will said. I think that all of these class action lawsuits that we're seeing pop up are an indication of just how upset people are that they didn't maybe understand the industry in the way they thought they did when they entered it via whatever vehicle they did. That said, public companies do need to make these disclosures, right? And if they didn't disclose the things that they are being accused of disclosing, I would be interested um, to see that information. But I think I would want to see more information to the extent of the, these restraints that they're talking about, the restraints and network difficulties, and determine if that is something that is so out, out of the ordinary and that would have actually affected the price were it disclosed. Uh, Adam, I'm going to toss it off to you. I don't know if you have any more information to add there or any thoughts. No, I, I don't have any more information on that. But actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the ball here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it to Will. Uh, so, Will, you talked about how a lot of miners have taken out debt, and that is in fact a narrative that will be seen quite 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 significantly. One of the things that's kind of always baffled me, and I was talking with a friend about this a couple of weeks ago, is that miners are taking out debt denominated in dollars, but what they're earning is Bitcoin. And so, I mean, how much has that exacerbated the pain that we've seen? Why are they doing that? Yeah, that's the uh, trillion dollar question for Bitcoin miners, right? Because everything that you owe is in bit or is in dollars, but you know, you're earning this Bitcoin yield. And what happens if you don't sell the Bitcoin at the correct time? And we've seen a lot of different strategies for miners. Iris Energy is one miner and they sold Bitcoin daily every time they mined it. So they sold it from sixty nine thousand dollars all the way to the bottom now and they're still selling. We've seen other miners hold and not sell like Marathon. But if you look at it, Almost every single model has broken in some way. Iris Energy defaulted on an SBV. Marathon has had a lot of troubles with its own uh, treasury. So like, there's not really a good way of doing it. It's all about balance. And really, it comes down to luck. 